Hello! In this video I want to show you how to quickly extract a grayscale profile from a backscatter electron image in the software called Fiji or ImageJ. So once you have downloaded Fiji from the link provided on the Assignment 3 handout, open Fiji and you should be getting a little box like this. Okay. You can open your um, image from the file menu, um, but I like just to find the file in my uh, <clears throat> in my filing system and drag the file in this little box here. This will open my image. Okay. I can place this window here. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the first thing to do is to set the scale. To set the scale, click on the um, segment tool and then zoom in um, near the scale bar in your image okay it's typically in the lower right corner okay now draw just by clicking on here and holding um, your, your mouse button down just drag a line um, that exactly fits the scale bar okay now in the analyze tab in Fiji click on it and then click on set scale it will give you the distance in pixels corresponding to the segment you just draw you, you just drew um, and then right down here in this known distance box the uh, the corresponding distance in microns. So I write 600 here. Uh, the aspect ratio says stays one, and the unit of uh, length is micrometer. Okay. Click OK, and now your image is calibrated for scale. Now you can zoom out um, and still using this uh, segment tool here um, you can select an area of interest in this crystal to uh, know better uh, what's going on with the grayscale values okay so for example um, I might want to choose a a core to rim profile that is free of inclusions um, and that shows the best kind of representative uh, pattern um, that we're seeing. So for example, right here, I, I see the, 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 the patchy zone core. I see a light gray area here that represents the normal zoning, and then the darker reverse rim right here. And it's it, this, this region of the crystal is pretty clean. There's no inclusions in the way and um, um, there's no cracks either, okay, or holes. So I might select this, ar this area. From the rim to the core, okay, perpendicular to the crystal face, if possible, okay, you see this is a right angle between my profile and the crystal face. I, dr I draw that line, okay. This is a pretty good line. So I'm ready to use the uh, in the uh, in the analyze tab again. I go on select plot profile. Okay, this generates a graph of grayscale values um, as a function of distance in my profile. Zero is where I started my profile, so this in this case is the rim. 
and uh, now 700 micrometers later is the core. You see there are a lot of wiggles here and this is in part due to uh, uh, artifacts of the pixel size so this is not a real all real variation however the the biggest feature here fairly flat here increasing here going down here and increasing again towards the rim these are real variations in grayscale that I can verify correlate visually with things I see in my best scatter electron image so this is a uh, useful but actually it's more useful to be able to replot it in Excel so uh, what I recommend you do is to click on the save button here okay this will give you a, a CSV file so give it a name of your crystal so in this case is LP du8 that's my sample number and my grain number is gr2 okay so i save this in a folder of my choice uh, i'm gonna hit uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna replace that file so i'm just gonna for the sake of this demonstration i'm just gonna call it v2 here okay so now I have got this grayscale data saved as a CSV file. I can I can um, I can open the CSV file in Excel and easily plot it up. Okay, so this is my CSV file right here. I can right click on it, open with Microsoft Excel, and it opens it readily. Um, the x values are the grace uh, are the distance okay in micrometers and the y are the grayscale values okay um, as I said there's a quite a bit of noise in this data so you one easy trick to clear up the noise a little bit is to do what we call a moving average okay so moving to do a moving average um, so what you all you need to do is to input the formula for average average and select the say um, a reasonable amount of distance to cover in one moving average data point is is maybe three microns okay so let's uh, let's select then five rows here it's gonna it's gonna average these five values I drag this formula to the right and it's going to average these five grayscale values now I can drag this formula down actually if I double click on this it's gonna go all the way down automatically and I've got now a, um, a smoothed out zoning profile okay I can now insert a graph um, and note that if you want to think about grayscale in terms of magnesium number you need to invert the scale because it's inversely proportional to grayscale is inversely proportional to magnesium number um, so I would recommend doing that in the format pane you can um, show values in reverse order okay and this will be a reflect reflecting the actual variations in magnesium numbers so you can adjust the scale um, 
to see better what's going on. So from our values of 100, or maybe 140. Okay. Now I start seeing some patterns. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically how you can use a quick image J trick to get um, more information about your designing patterns in your minerals. More soon. Cheers.